Welcome to r slash pro revenge where a victim runs over his bully's truck with a train. To be honest, the I in the title is not me, but a former colleague who does not have a Reddit account. We work together in the same ad agency. I will give my personal context first and then write her story exactly as she told me. We work together in one of the biggest ad agencies in my country. She was a director and I was a manager in different departments. It was a global group, but it honestly sucked. I quit because I was burned out. It had a Game of Thrones politics and daily occurrences of both sexual and moral harassment. That place was the worst professional experience and one of the worst personal ones I have ever had. F them. I was hired as an account director for a huge ad agency. Let's call it FFC. My account was one of the top five accounts in the agency and was worth at least seven digits. My boss, the accounts VP, was one of the worst human beings I have ever met. He was sexist, rude, and liked to play favorites. When I got there, as a young and okay looking woman, I instantly became one of his faves. He was married, by the way. One day, we left a happy hour together and he offered me a ride. I lived nearby him, so not overthinking it, I accepted. He made a move on me. I politely refused and left the car. After that, my life became a living heck. He would not include me in important meetings and then complain I didn't know things that were discussed. My reviews went from five stars to one. He pretended he didn't remember a raise he had promised. He would talk with my team and ignore me. The work, which was already hard, I worked 80 hours a week, became unbearable. I almost quit. I had a long conversation with the agency HR, which went nowhere because she was his personal friend. I even escalated it to the president with whom I had a friendly relationship and he said I was reading too much into things. One thing I did right though is that I had a great relationship with my clients, so they were afraid to fire me. I had helped save the account, which was almost lost when I was hired. So they played a smart hand. They hired a girl who had worked with my client on his former company with whom he had a friendly relationship to replace me. They then put me aside on a smaller account which was on the verge of being lost so they could justify firing me when that happened. But then I got lucky. My original client got promoted and opened a marketing manager position under him. When I applied, he even skipped a few hiring steps. This was October and I was to start on January. I asked him not to disclose to the agency he had hired me until I had the chance to tell them myself. The position would not work directly with the ad agency and I no longer managed their account so there was no conflict of interest and he said okay. Honestly, he couldn't care less. I was planning on giving them my one month notice required in my country on November so they could have time to find someone else. I was fired October 31st. It would have been the worst experience in the world if I cared. The VP asked me in his office to fire me. He said no one would believe me, that I would never find another job in the market, that I had ratted him out to HR, that I was incompetent, and all the worst things someone could have said. He sent me to HR to sign some papers and told me to leave the building afterwards. I recorded him. When I went to HR, the woman in charge sat me down and kept making snark comments about me not appreciating working in one of the biggest ad agencies in the world. That I could have been great. It was surreal. Being fired in my country grants people a fair amount of money. I would have received around 5 months pay per the law. She wanted me to sign papers accepting that. I said no and played her the record from the VP. She went pale because she knew that was a lawsuit and also that the global team would not like it at all. I left that day and said I would contact them through my lawyer. Never said anything about the job lined up. The next week I, my lawyer, my recording and a bunch of other documents, emails and text messages sat down with the agency to negotiate. I ended up with over 15 months pay. Both parts signed an NDA which included me saying I had quit. I then took a two month vacation, told my new boss I had made a deal while quitting but that I had not disclosed I was going to work for them. He said he would tell them himself not to worry. January comes and I start at my new job. My boss then tells me that since I was the one with the most experience in advertising agencies, I would be a consultant to the annual deals for all the agencies that managed all their accounts. 
This included allowing new agencies to pitch for us. My boss, which didn't deal with FCC anymore, of course forgot to tell them about me. No feeling in the world was better than entering the agency as a client. It was almost orgasmic sitting in a meeting to see their pitch and watching the VP's dumbstruck face when he entered the room. I was nothing but nice, made pertinent questions, and smiled all the way through. I ended up telling my boss in confidence what had happened. He authorized me to advise against the agency, said that if compliance knew about their behavior, they would lose the account anyway. They lost the account. They lost three other accounts in that same year. The whole leadership was fired. The agency closed. The VP can't find a job for his life. And I just got promoted. I think we've all had to deal with a terrible boss at some point in our life. And bosses who sexually harass their employees are the worst of the worst. So nothing is as satisfying as hearing stories of employees sticking it to terrible bosses. Okay, so some backstory. I was 13 and lived in a really fancy neighborhood and every year we have a best lawn competition. The prize for the winner is a $500 check. Some of my neighbors are really nice, but some are rich snobs. This is also sort of an entitled person story, so I'll be using abbreviations like EP. So I was managing my parents' flower garden and I worked really hard for about two hours. And when I finished, it looked really good. Entitled person was walking her dog and spotted me admiring my work. Entitled person is generally a butthole to everyone, so I wanted to avoid conversation, but she called out to me and the conversation went as follows. Wow, did you do all this work? Yeah, I was out working for the lawn competition. You did a great job. Do you think you can do my lawn? Hmm, if you pay me by the hour, I'll be happy to work. Ugh, why do I have to pay? Because I'm helping you compete against me, I want some profit out of it. Okay, fine, $10 an hour. So the next day, I do her very weedy lawn, and I think I did pretty good. I pick up every single one of her weeds, I cut the grass, and I even buy some flowers for the patches of dirt where large weeds used to be. After four hours of work, I knock on an entitled person's door to let her see the work, thinking she would be impressed. I was very wrong. Ew, what is this? I was confused, but I wanted to see if I missed anything. What? The grass is the wrong color. The grass is green. What color is it supposed to be? Orangish. I want my lawn to have fall colors, which I'm pretty sure is a made up excuse. Um, you didn't say that. You should have known. Now get out of here because you ruined my lawn. I'm not paying you. Wait, what? Entitled person walks into her house and slams the door. I go home and start to plan my revenge. Around the neighborhood, I hear an entitled person bragging about her perfect lawn. About a week later, I stay up until 12 o'clock, and I go to a compost pile behind my house and gather up all the weeds I toss from my own garden. I go to an entitled person's house and spend another hour kicking up her flowers, adding bug bait, and replanting the weeds in her yard. That morning was the morning of the competition. By the morning, her garden had some bugs and looked like the house was abandoned. It was worth all the work to see entitled person's face in the morning. Imagine a toddler who just saw his favorite teddy bear get ripped to shreds. We didn't win the competition, but entitled person came in last and was humiliated. Entitled person knew it was me and tried to get me in trouble, but I asked her if she had proof. I also told the whole neighborhood about the situation, so the other neighbors began to dislike her. Entitled person never spoke to me again and eventually moved away, maybe because of the humiliation. Trust me, rich people care about lawns very much. I'm not much of a gardener, so correct me if I'm wrong here, but isn't orange grass dead grass? I say spray the lawn with herbicide to kill every single living thing on her lawn. And there you go, fall colors. That'll be 40 bucks. This story happened about 15 years ago, give or take. At the time, I worked for a small industrial railroad in my city that served about 20 different industries along the docks. To get to the docks, from the yards where I would pick up the inbound cars, we had a mile of street trackage that ran right down the middle of a small street. Numerous bars lined the street on one side, with the river on the other side. 
Because of city regulations, we were only allowed to operate along that span of track between specific hours, typically 11 at night to about 5 in the morning. However, since the bars were open at that time, it also meant that we had to trundle along at a crawl, usually walking pace or just about that, and keep the locomotive on the front end of the movement. Every night I went down that street, there would typically be two or three people who would park too close to the tracks, prompting me to have to get people to move their cars. It wasn't a major problem, just an annoyance. Except for one guy. It seemed that every single night I would have to stop about halfway down because this guy would always park his truck at an angle in the street as opposed to parallel parking. There were some angle parking spaces, but they were further down where there wasn't rails on the road. Every single night I'd have to head into the bar this guy owned and bug the guy to get him to move the truck. Most of the time, it'd take him a good 30 minutes to an hour to drag himself out and move the thing. This meant, of course, I was losing time that I needed to get my job done. After months of this, I finally decided that I had enough. So I decided to have the guy towed. Yeah, that didn't work out as well as I hoped. Turned out that guy also had some job with the city or the mayor's office or some friend in either. So no one would dare come out and tow his truck. I think I waited there a good hour before he eventually came out and moved it, even having the gall to flip me the bird as he left. At that point, I decided that not only was I totally done with the guy, but if the chance arose, I was going to teach him a lesson he wouldn't soon forget. Nothing physical per se, just a hard learned lesson. Couple days later, I found myself hitting down the track with half a dozen heavy cars with machinery bound for the docks. As I rounded the curve and neared the place where that guy always parked, I gently applied the independent brakes on the locomotive. This would slow the heavy train, but wasn't enough to stop it outright. At least, not quickly. I waited until the very last minute, laying on the horn and applying the full brakes, bringing everything to a screeching halt in the middle of the street. As I felt the brakes begin to hold, there was this loud thunk and screeching and tearing of metal as the train simply punted the truck out of the way, tearing the bed clean off in the process. This did not go unnoticed as a crowd had started to gather out front of the bar when they heard the train coming. I stay in the cab, calling back to dispatch and inform them that I'd struck a parked car and they needed to get the police and a tow truck out to my location. All the while, I could hear this guy screaming, heard him over the sound of the locomotive, no less, at the top of his lungs about how he was going to have me thrown in jail, sue the company, and all manner of things. Locking the doors, I opted to just wait in the cab for the boys in blue to arrive. Eventually, they pop around and start taking statements. I explain the problem, noting that I couldn't, well, I could have, but it wouldn't have been a good idea, simply slam on the brakes due to the cargo I was carrying, and that the only reason I hit the truck was because it wasn't properly parked. I added that the gentleman had been warned in the past that something like this could happen and had ignored the warnings. The man, for his part, was simply livid. Hopping around, yelling at me, yelling at the cops, and just beside himself. In the end, he was ticketed for his bad parking, obstructing the passage of a train, and his truck was totaled. And he ended up on the hook for paying for it. Truck was brand new and not yet paid off, or so I was told. It took about two hours to clean up the mess, and I was, per company rules, suspended for a week during the company investigation. But honestly, it was worth it. Didn't have any problems with him from that point forward. How stupid do you have to be to park your car on train tracks? Not only does that have to be illegal in multiple ways, but that's just asking to get your car destroyed. I'm sorry dude, but truck versus train, the train is going to win that fight 100% of the time. This basically happened like 3 weeks ago. I moved out from my mother's house since I was going off to university to study math and physics. My brother had a girlfriend who I really liked and respected. I soon accepted her as part of my family. She used to spend lots of time at our place because her parents were a nightmare. They were pretty poor, which doesn't have anything to do with them being horrible parents, just for context. But they also were stingy as anything. Here in Germany, you'll get money for your child to buy them food, provide shelter, warmth, and clothes. Her parents didn't spend her child money on anything for her. She had to sleep in a dark, cold room, buy her own clothes, and got no pocket money. The only money she got was from her job, being a postgirl. 
That job only amounted to 48 euros total in a month and her bus ticket would already cost her 58 euros, so she had to ask her mother to lend her something, which she would have to pay back to her. Her parents didn't want her to move out or go study since she was way too intelligent for them to ever control, unlike her simple brother. When she said she wanted to move together with my brother into the city where she had gotten an apprenticeship, her mom nearly exploded. She actually had hoped she wouldn't get the job so she could realize how stupid she was for wanting a good future for herself. You can imagine how much her parents hated my brother. Fast forward, I came back home to stay a few weeks at home visiting friends and relatives. She is as usual at our house, but my mother then told me she was living here permanently, being registered exactly at my home address. I'm a little stunned, as I had only some days before that suggested that very thing to her and she said she didn't want to break ties with her family. But things changed when her mom tried to cut up her prom dress that she had been given by my mother as a present. She was furious about what my mother had done. She just explained that she never got such a nice dress, so why should her daughter? My brother's girlfriend just called my brother and my mother then drove them since his car was getting fixed. They just packed up as much stuff as they could carry, not including a lot of the stuff my brother's girlfriend had gotten as a present, since she didn't pay for it, so it wasn't hers. So her bike, her clothes given to her by her aunt, and some of the presents she had gotten from her brother had to be left behind, since the mom was threatening them with the cops. Her last words were, You can always come back to us when he has beaten you black and blue. We love you. My brother can be a freaking butthole, but he never got violent towards anyone. Since that day, she's been living with us. Now here come the juice. Since my mother is really good with law and legal stuff, we have gotten her parents to pay her the child money they are now owing her. We also requested for a money support for her since she has no income. She is only 18 so she will get a lot of money, plus her child money, plus the apprenticeship earnings, plus a little extra from our family. Since she isn't living with her family anymore, they were getting Wongeld, which is a financial support given to you per person and square meters of your living space. The Wonhungsgeld also got a lot less. I'm kind of butchering these words so if there are any German viewers out there, please tell me how to pronounce this. Mind you, her parents were gifting themselves smartwatches and laptops for Christmas. My brother's girlfriend had gotten a shampoo bottle with a discount label on it. So after a few days, they realized they were in a lot of financial doo-doo and had to pay her back four months of child support, which they couldn't. They pleaded for the amount to be halved, which my brother's girlfriend could have agreed to. But she just took a pen and said, F that crossed out their plea and put it back into the envelope. She now doesn't have anything to do with her family anymore who tried through multiple means to get to her. I really admire her for staying cool all these years. She rocks. To be honest, this sounds like a classic case of raised by narcissists and I'm really glad that girl got out of that toxic environment. I don't have any idea how long that child support lasts in Germany, but I sincerely hope these parents have to pay out of their nose for years to come. That was r slash pro revenge and if you liked this video and want to see more, please be sure to like and subscribe because it really helps me out.